Big Bang is the description of Shiva, Shakti King. He woke up and he rolled. We have invented things which don't exist and made it real. Scientists are wondering, is existence really there or not? They will never know if they don't give up their present ways of exploration. They say time started with the Big Bang, which came out of nothingness. But what is the true nature of time and space? To measure time, at one time we used to have hourglasses, you know, sand. That was like the Mayan calendar, it would run out of sand at some point. <laughs> 2012, <laughs> then they don't know what to do. Then we understood the limitation of something moving from one place to another and we set up these clocks which are cyclical. We understood once it's a cycle, we can keep it going forever and ever, at least ever in our context. In terms of human life context, ever. We still have grandfather clocks, though the grandfathers are dead, the clocks are still on still working, isn't it? Grandfather stopped ticking long ago, but his clock is still ticking <laughs> So we understood the durability, the endurance of a cycle. So we shifted the clock from dropping sand to… We are almost sometimes talking about perpetual clocks these days. Solar-powered clocks and other things are supposed to be perpetual, nothing is perpetual. Perpetual compared to the human lifespan, yes. So when you said the Big Bang, Paul Reinhardt, who wrote a very popular book in science today, titled his book as uh, Endless Universe. Always the Indian way of looking at things always said, Existence is an ever-expanding existence. It is endless, not because it's endless, because it's ever-expanding. It's expanding beyond your comprehension, faster than your comprehension. So, it is an ever-expanding universe. An ever-expanding universe is an endless universe. So, you always see that symbol of cosmos behind Shiva's head and all these things, you know. Even this, you see, that's spreading like a ripple because this is the symbol of the cosmos spreading endlessly, but generally in this cycle. That is why all this saligram, everything is so important for the… this culture, is because it signifies that symbolism of ever-expanding galaxies or universe. So Paul Reinhardt made a very interesting computer models simulations of Big Bang. So, uh, I happened to meet him and uh, he was giving a talk showing his computer simulations of Big Bang. And the amazing thing is, these Big Bangs, he… he says, and now all the scientists are saying, there was no one Big Bang, there were series of bangs. We had a long, long chat, about five and a half hours, we started talking and you know, and everything that he is propounding where he is trying to show the simulated version of Big Bang is the description of Shiva that we are talking about all the time. It's incredible <laughs> And he said it's a series of bangs, not a single bang. So I asked him a simple question, so if it's a series of bangs, could it be a roar? See, if you take off the silencer for a motorcycle or a car, it won't do brrr, it'll do dap, 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 dap. You know, big bangs are happening. 
this is how an engine is working, you know, the internal combustion engine is firing. When you throttle up, it fires so rapidly, it feels like a roll. But actually it's bang, 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 that's how the engine is going. So I said, if there are lots of banks, could it be a roll? Then he, he made a whole scientific mathematic calculations on his computer and calculated the period of time in which these bangs could have happened and he said, well, it could be a roar. We ne I never thought like this, but according to my numbers, he has… I don't know numbers, I can barely count my fingers, okay? <laughs> he produced all kinds of calculations and said, yes, it could be a roar. Then I told him, do you know, in our culture, in the Indian way of life, particularly in the yogic system, we always said everything was still primordial, absolutely still. Then Shakti came. This is right now what they're saying in physics is, in vacuum state, if you give some electromagnetic forces, not inside, outside, let's say there is a chamber in vacuum, absolute vacuum condition, if you apply some electromagnetic forces here, not inside, outside, immediately here, virtual protons and neutrons will happen. So right now they're saying this is how the creation started. There was absolute stillness, nothingness which we call Shiva, Shiva means that which is not, everything was that which is not. Then Shakti started coming and playing here and he woke up and he rolled. So his first form we called, he's a Rudra. The word Rudra literally means a roarer. For the first time he rolled. When he rolled, he took the form of a linga, an ellipsoid. This is Shiva Purana. This is what the physicists are saying today. He's saying it's a series of banks, it is a roar. When he roared, series of ellipsoid forms happened and around every, every ellipsoid form, some particles started gathering and multiple galaxies happened. This is what modern physics is saying. So this is pertaining to only material and space. So where does time fit in? Where does time come from? Time doesn't exist. It is only because your conscious mind wants to compartmentalize everything. The nature of the intellect is, if it doesn't cut something, it cannot understand anything, isn't it? See, the very basis of your intellect is, it is like a scalpel which cuts open everything. Only if it cuts, it will know, otherwise it will not know. So because we have developed modern science through an intellectual process, our way of knowing is always dissection, isn't it? If we want to understand you, we'll dissect you. Can we know where your creative power is by opening up your brain or by opening up your body? It will not happen, but that is the way we will try to find out because that is the reason why modern science with its physical means comes to a dead end at a certain point. This happened a few years ago, many years ago. I never subject myself to such indignities anymore. I was with a group of people and they wanted to… they said, uh, we want to test your gamma waves. I… I did not know I have gamma waves in me. They said, no, you have gamma waves in your brain, we want to measure this. I said, okay, because I was obligated to them for something and I said, okay. So they put fourteen different electrodes into me and uh, they said, you meditate. I said, I don't know how to meditate. They said, why you initiate, you teach everybody meditation, you don't know? I said, I don't know how to meditate, I teach people, but I don't know. Then they asked, okay, what can you do? I said, if you want, I can sit still. Then they discussed and they said, okay. So I just sat still. After fifteen, twenty minutes, they're hitting me with some metallic object on my ankle, on my knee, in my elbow. Initially I thought, okay, this is some part of their experiment and I waited. Then it became more and more persistent and very painful. 
I thought, what is it that they want to do to me? They want to break my bones or... Or if they wanted me to come out, if they just say, open your eyes, I would open my eyes, I'm fully alert and conscious. Then not able to bear the pain, I opened my eyes and looked. They were all giving me a weird look, they looked at me like this. I said, did I do something wrong? <laughs> they said, our instruments say you're dead. <laughs> I said, this is a great diagnosis you have <laughs> Then they said, obviously you're not dead, you're talking. Either you're dead or your brain is dead. And I said, the second one is too insulting. I'll take the first one. I don't mind being dead. <laughs> I'm alive enough. So if you think I'm dead, I'm fine. Why I'm saying this is, you are trying to enter every space in creation through physical means. It stops somewhere and you're unwilling to admit it. But for the first time, a large percentage of the responsible scientific community is clearly saying, universe is endless. And they are also saying, we will never know the nature of creation. Not that we do not know, we will never know. They will never know if they don't give up their present ways of exploration. So we have always seen creation as a beginningless thing. Is it just a convenient philosophy? No, because it is beginningless. Because as you realized, an hourglass working as a clock is not practical, way back creation realized, working this way is not practical, so it works in cycles. Whatever is in cycle is beginningless, isn't it? Where is the beginning point for a circle, you tell me? Hmm? Wherever you are standing right now, that is the beginning point for you. Because you started counting from two thousand or whatever, and now you think this is two thousand nine. This is just your nonsense. This is just human nonsense, isn't it? Two thousand nine, two thousand ten, two thousand twelve, this is all just human nonsense. There is no existential basis for this. Yes or no? So time, though people are trying to always talk time and space, time and space, time has no existential basis. I do not know whether science, physical sciences will ever dare to venture into this in near future, but someday they will have to admit it that time has no existential basis. It is just human nonsense. Space also has no existential basis. See, both time and space, you can stretch them out and make them as wide as galaxy, as long as light years, or you can roll them down all here in a point, or into nothingness. You can obliterate it into nothingness. Right now, Modern science, physical sciences, sometimes are asking the question, is existence really there? <laughs> How is that for you? <laughs> You're here, I'm here, we're experimenting, we got laboratories, and the results are going in a direction where scientists are wondering, is existence really there or not? When somebody says, existence is relative happening, it's only relative, it's not absolute, now there is a question whether it's there or not, isn't it? I happen to be in the home school, these eight, nine-year-old boys, they come up to me and ask, Sadhguru, is life real or is it a dream? Their words were, is life true or is it a dream? And whoa, 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 you know, eight-year-old kids asking me, is life true or is it a dream? <laughs> so I looked at them, then I said, see, life is a dream, but the dream is true. The dream is true, isn't it? So, is there time? Is there space? You are asking this question, 
from a logical perspective. So when I… when you ask a question, the obvious answer has to be yes or no, but that's not how it is. Because these dimensions do not belong to the duality of yes or no, is and isn't. This has to be perceived. This has to be… with a certain abandon you will know it. You will not know it by thinking, you will not know it by analyzing, you will not know it by reading a book or by listening to a lecture. If you simply sit with me, I'll show you what time and space is.